morning, good morning, Facebook family, friends. Wow, what a week it's been for all of us. So much is going on. And I know we're all uh, full of emotions, full of hurt, pain, anger. We're feeling all kinds of different things, and I, I understand. I'm feeling it too. And you know, I was thinking that I should go on Facebook and I should say something. And uh, I thought, but I can't. I have to wait until I hear from the Lord because there's so many opinions out there, our emotions are out there and they're all justified. You know, everybody has a right to say how they feel. I've been reading some of your posts. Some of them have encouraged me. Some people have disappeared off of Facebook. Maybe they don't know what to say. I understand that. But I'll tell you, for me, I woke up one morning and I told Robert, that's my husband, I said to him, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't know what to do with my feelings, my emotions. I gotta talk to the Lord. And I did that. I talked to the Lord and I tell you, my first response to him was, I talk to the Lord, but I thought about that thing and I said, no, you know what? The Lord talked to me and I'm so grateful. He let me know what was on his heart. And folks, that's what we need to know right now. Yes, we have our opinions and our feelings and emotions, but we need to know how is God feeling? What is God saying? That helped me take the right position when I know what God is saying. So I'm gonna share with you, not what I think, but what I know the Holy Spirit said to me. So let's pray. Righteous Father and our God, we thank you for your holy word that is forever settled in heaven. Father, you watch over your word to perform it. You said it will not return unto you void. Doesn't matter what we do in the earth. It's what Jesus said to Satan. It is written, it is written. And that is what you expect for all of us to live by what your word says, what is written. So speak to us today out of your word by the Holy Ghost. God, thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads us who guides us into all the truth of Jesus Christ, who is the living word. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah, I tell you, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. He will put you on the right track. And I thank him because that is what he did for me. So let's get right into the word, guys. We are gonna be coming out of, um, and you know, I always start off with the King James, and we're going to be coming from Psalms, the 11th chapter. And you know, actually, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5, but 5 is the verse, excuse me, primarily that we're going to talk about, okay? <clears throat> so let's read. In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the strength that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes, behold his eyes, try the children of men. And our verse, the Lord tries the righteous but the wicked and him that loves violence, his soul hates. When I prayed and I got up off my knees and I start reading the word and the Lord brought this to my mind that he is laughing at the wicked because he sees that his day is coming. Have a good day, Scott. Okay. <laughs> he sees that the day of the wicked is coming and so when i heard that word wicked like i always do wicked and and then the lord led me to this scripture i didn't look for this scripture he led me to this scripture and it says the lord trieth the righteous but the wicked and
and him that loves violence, his soul hates. And I thought when I read that, I thought, Lord, that's kind of, whoo, that's kind of hard, Lord. But one thing God said to me, and I'm very, very clear on it, in the beginning when he told me to teach and to preach his word, and he made that clear to me even a month ago, what I tell you to say, that's what you say. Don't add anything to my word and do not take anything away from my word. You say it just like I tell you. So when I read this and I thought, whoa, that's kind of, but I'm going to say it just like God told me to say it. This is his word. If you have your Bible, you can go to Psalms 11 and you can see verse five and you can see that is what this verse says. And I wasn't even looking for this verse. I wasn't looking for a verse for to go with what is going on right now. I did not do that. God is my witness. This is what he gave me. Okay, so let's look at this. So it says the Lord tries the righteous. What does that word try mean? Well, it is a Hebrew word, and I'm going to tell you the Hebrew, at least the Hebrew numbers. I may not pronounce the word right, but I'm going to tell you the numbers because I want you to be able to go look that word up for yourself and see if I'm not saying it exactly like it is. So this word, and it's a Hebrew word, this is Old Testament, it's, the number is 974, and I think I can say this one is Bakken, B-A-C-H-A-N. And this word means to test. So the Lord, he tests the righteous. It means to prove. He proves the righteous. He searches us out. That's what that word try means. It denotes an investigation to determine the essential qualities of the object, where the object, what's our essential qualities. He's trying us to see what is in us, especially integrity or uprightness. So, you know, the scripture says, don't think it's strange when you go through these trials as though some strange thing is happening to you. No, but God is testing us, purifying us, trying us to see, is his word getting in us? Are we becoming righteous like him? Is righteousness in us? Because it says he tries who? The righteous, okay? He tests the righteous. Look, righteous, it means the just ones. He tries those who are just. He tries those who do it lawfully. You know, the scripture talks about if you're uh, in gains or you don't win unless you do it lawfully, you can be disqualified running a race. If you run before the, gain, the, the gun goes off, you can be disqualified. So that's what it means. The righteous, we do things according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then it says the righteous are those who are honest. See, uh, no, the scripture said whatsoever things are honest, to think on those things. That's the righteous. And then of course, to be righteous means to be right. To be righteous means to be in right standing with God. It means doing things on God's standard, not your standard, my, not my standard, not the righteousness of this world, or in one place it says, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags, not your righteousness, but the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Scripture says, he that knew no sin, he became sin, that's Jesus Christ, that we may receive the righteousness of God through his works on Calvary. And now that we are righteous through Jesus Christ, we are to go on doing righteous works. So now God tests us, he tries us. He, he allows us to be in situations as Jesus was tested, led of the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be tried, tested, proved of the devil to see what was in Jesus Christ. Would Jesus cave in and say, yeah, I am hungry. I think I will turn that stone into bread. Would Jesus cave in and say, yeah, after all, I am a king. I should have all of these kingdoms 
and the glory of them. No, Jesus did not cave in. When he was tried, and that's in Matthew, the fourth chapter, when he was tried, tested, proved, when he did things lawfully and honestly, what did Jesus say? He said, it is written. Every time the devil came at him, he said, it is written. Till Satan told him to bow down and worship him, he said, you know, got beside yourself. It is written, worship the Lord, him only shall we serve. Amen. So the righteous, when he tries us, God is not trying us to kill us. He is trying us to purify us, to make us conform to the image of Jesus Christ. So it says he tries the righteous. That's what he does with the righteous. Notice it doesn't say that he tries the wicked to see what is in them because he knows what's in them. They're wicked. They're of their father, the devil. He doesn't test them, prove them. He know what they are. But let's keep moving. So it says, the Lord, God, uh, his very nature is righteous. And remember, we are his children. He wants us to be conformed to his nature, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Psalms 145 and 17 says, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. And he wants us to be righteous in all of our ways and in all of our works. Deuteronomy uh, 32 and 4 says, he is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are judgment or justice. A God of truth, no lie in God. He's a God of the truth and without iniquity, which is sin. There is no iniquity in God. He is just and right. That's who our God is. That's the God that we serve and he wants us to be just like him. So he says, the Lord tries the righteous. Look at this, but, but the wicked and him that loves violence or does violence, his soul hates. All right, who is the wicked? Let's talk about the wicked. So the wicked is a Hebrew word. The number for this word is 7563. And the word is Rasha, R-A-S-H-A. Now, I may not be pronouncing it right, don't get stuck on that, but know that number, 7563. And this is the wicked, when it says, but the wicked, let's see who the wicked are. The wicked are morally wrong. That's the moral code in society. You are wrong, okay? The wicked are bad. The wicked are unrighteous. If we are lawful and honest and just, they are unlawful, they are not honest, and they are not just. They are sinful. That's what this word means. Right here, you can look it up for yourself. The wicked are godless. They are without God. They are, look at this word, vicious. That word wicked, it means a vicious person. Now look, the word rasha is used parallel to practically every Hebrew word for sin, evil and iniquity that's what these people are it's describing these wicked people in this verse when he says but the wicked these are those wicked people russia points to the attitudes and the intentions of wicked people god is opposed to these types of people in genesis 6 god says i'm sorry i made them look at that if you go back to genesis 6 You'll read that where God said these people are full of violence, corruption, evil. Every evil thing that they can imagine, they do. And God said, I'm sorry I made them. And he hasn't changed his mind. You know, the scripture says, as it was in the days of Noah. Those were the days of Noah. God said that in the days of Noah. And if the scripture says, as it was in the days of Noah, then God is feeling like that right now about these same kind of people in the days of the new millennium in the 20th century. He's feeling the same way. In fact, what did he say? He says, 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have made them. Why? Because it says the earth is also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. That was Noah's day. And it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again in the days when the son of man is about to return. Now we're not talking about the return of Christ right now. We're talking about how God is feeling about the things that are going on in the earth. I want you to know that God has feelings too. Back here in Genesis 6, you can read it, verse 7, when he said, I'm sorry that I made these men. He's feeling that way right now when he's looking at what the morally wrong that is done in our society, the bad things that are done in our society, the unrighteous things, the sinful things, the godless things, and the vicious acts that these violent, wicked men and women do in society, God said, I'm sorry I made you. Now, I don't know if you are wicked. I don't know. You know, the wicked are probably not listening to this message. It'd be good if they did. But I'll tell you, you want to make sure you are not that wicked man or that wicked woman. Exodus 23 and 7, God said, I will not justify the wicked. The wicked cannot be justified. You might get justified in this earth. Your friends might tell you, you okay, you didn't do nothing wrong. But I tell you, there's a court higher than the Supreme Court. I tell you, there's a justice higher than the justice in this earth. There is the word of God. He created the earth. It is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world is his and they that dwell therein. He is the one that said, thou shalt not kill. God said that, not man. And if and when we kill, I tell you, you might get justified in this earth, but God said, I will not, I will not justify the wicked. People with this characteristic Rasha, people with this characteristic are guilty of violating the social rights of others. I'm just talking wicked. I'm telling you what God told me to say. I didn't go search out a scripture trying to go with the times. I did not, I don't play those games. I say what God tell me to say. I get the scriptures the Holy Spirit give to me. But look at this. How, how fitting is this? People with this characteristic, what characteristic? Wickedness, moral, morally, societally wrong. Murder is wrong. I don't care who does it. Bad people, unrighteous, sinful, godless, vicious people with this characteristic, they are guilty of violating the social rights of others through what? Oppressing them. Wicked people love to oppress people. They, they're greedy people. They don't care how they get gain. They exploit situations, exploit power. Huh? They are murderers, guys. This is the definition. You go look it up for yourself. They are murderers. These wicked people that God is talking about in Psalms 11 and verse 5, they are described as murderers. It says that they are dishonest in business. That's what the Bible says about this wicked person. Let's keep moving. It says that Rasha, these wicked people, this characteristic, they twist justice. I didn't make this up. It says they twist justice. Russia is wrongdoing and being in the wrong. You're just wrong. Ain't nothing right about you. Ain't nothing right about what you did. It's all wrong. It's all bad. It is all unrighteous and unlawful. It is vicious, God said. It's vicious. Second Chronicles 19 and 2 says what? They hate the Lord. You go read it. The wicked, they hate God. You know, Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they did me wrong, they're going to do you wrong. These wicked people, Russia, they hate God. These people are hostile toward God and his people. 
They're hostile toward what is good and, and lawful. And I'm going to stay with the word. I'm not going to let my opinions come in here. That, I'm going to let the word speak for itself. Russia describes a person who has broken the law. Listen to what they, this, let's go back to our scripture. It says the Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked, we talked about the wicked, and him that does violence. Let's talk about violence. What is violence? Him that does violence. That word violent, the number, it's Hebrew word, the number is 2555. Listen. It is oppression. That's what violence is. It's oppression. Oppressing people by physical force. It's going to say that, but I'm saying it. Oppressing people by physical force. Are you feeling this, this message? Are you feeling this scripture? Violence, wickedness, uh-oh, describing those, the wicked and the violent, they're one and the same people. But the word violence describes wickedness. Being violent toward people with wickedness. Violence is wrong. It's just, it's wrong. It's wrong to be violent towards, you know, it's wrong to be violent toward animals. <laughs> we take up for animals if there's a violence, it's wrong. Violence is bad. It's evil. Webster says violence is the use of physical force so as to injure. That's what violence is. And God said, they that love violence. There are people who love to injure other people. They feel good about it. They don't, don't, they don't feel any kind of guilt or remorse or for, for being violent towards other people. They are abusers. This, this is what Webster says. Webster says that violence is abuse. This is coming from Psalms 11 and 5. I didn't make this up. Go read it. It says that violence is damage or destruction when you're wicked, when you're violent. This is, this God's, he's going to say it in a minute how he feels about that. This is what the wicked does. This is what violent people do. Back over in Genesis, the sixth chapter, it, verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. Is it filled with violence now? It's filled with violence right now. And I got to say this. And, and what did that scripture say? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man returned. We're back there, God, guys. We're back there full of violence, full of corruption from the White House to the schoolhouse to some of our houses, full of corruption, full of violence and terror, abuse. Now, let's see what God says about how he feels about those who are wicked and those who are violent. I'm going to read the scripture again. It is not my scripture. It came from the Bible. You can read it yourself. Psalms 11 verse 5. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that does violence, his soul hates. He said, I hate those who do violence. I hate those who do wickedness. Well, let's see. What do they do? He says, Russia, I hate those who do moral wrong in the community to hurt people. I hate those who are just bad. Nothing good is in them. I hate, God used the word hate. That is a very strong term. And you know what? Let's look at that word. It means extreme dislike. 
God said he dislikes you if you are wicked. He says if you are a violent person. Oh, but you love violence. Not, not you defended yourself and you had to get physical. No, you look for opportunities to be violent. You look for opportunities to be wicked. You look for opportunities to be sinful and godless and vicious toward other people. You look for those opportunities. God said, not me, I, not me, I'm praying for people. But God says, and he can say it because all souls are his. He said, his soul hates those who does these things, who murder. He hates them. He hates the godless and the vicious. That's what he said, the violence, those who oppress people. He says he hates them. He dislikes them. A strong dislike. Look at the other word, disgust. God said, I am disgusted with people who murder people, disgusted with people who bring oppression to the lives of other people. When he told Moses, look, you go down there and you tell Pharaoh, he better let my people go. He told Moses, the cries of my people have come up to me. I have heard their cries. I have heard their pain. I have heard their anguish over the years. It has come up to my ears. You go down there and you tell Pharaoh, he better let my people go. When Pharaoh said, no, I want you to understand that the judgment of God came into the land. Oh, yes, it did. You don't have to worry about the wicked. Somebody said the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. This is a battle between good and evil. God said, I hate this. You don't have to try to bring judgment to the wicked. You don't have to try to bring judgment to the violent. God said, I'm going to deal with the wicked. I have a place for the wicked. Look what he says. He says, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Many sorrows. That wicked man, that wicked woman, that wicked person, they have no peace. Peace comes from the prince of peace. He said, the arms of the wicked shall be broken. This is what God said. Not you. You don't have to break his arm. God said his arms are going to be broken. Look what he says. God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. God, oh, he sees all this wickedness. What we, what we see, we don't see it all. God sees it all. Forgive me, guys. He sees it all, all over the world. The wickedness to children. So many children are being kidnapped and we know what's going on. Wickedness all around the world, all kinds of wickedness. And he sees it and he's tired. He says, I am disgusted with this wicked behavior. And I'm sorry that I made these wicked men and these wicked women who murder and oppress, who destroy the lives of people, people who are not trying to destroy you. It says the Lord is laughing at the wicked for he sees that his day is coming. Oh, wicked man, your day is coming. You may get away with it in this world, but you're not gonna get away with it in the world to come. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell. You're going to be turned into hell where the worm don't die, where there is no sunshine. There is no music. There are no birds singing. There are no children laughing and playing. There are no diversities of race. There are no flowers, no sun shining on the just and rain falling on the unjust. There is no, there are no colors in hell. There is torment where the worm don't die and where people want to die and can't die. There is a place for the wicked and it is in hell. You don't have to worry about the wicked. It might seem like they're getting away. They might get away on this side. But I tell you, God said, I didn't say it. You go read it for yourself. It says the Lord is laughing at the wicked because he sees that his day is coming. Look what Job said. He said, there is a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Ooh, and the weary soul should be at rest. You may be weary right now because you see all this wickedness. 
You may be weary right now because your heart is broken. It is aching because of the, the, the viciousness that has gone on for years and years and years. And you haven't been able to express it. No matter how you try to express your pain, you were told to just deal with your pain. You were told to just go away and so what? It doesn't matter. But I want you to know that it does matter with God. He sees your tears. He sees your anguish. He sees your pain. And he says, there's a place where this, the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary soul shall be at rest. What I'm telling you, don't be weary in well-doing. That's what the word said. Don't you be weary in being well and doing well. For in due season, you shall reap. You shall reap the righteousness from your righteous God. Don't get so angry that you sin. You see, Jesus said, get angry, but he said, don't sin. We must learn how to be angry but not sin because all sin is going to be punished, all of it. So we must learn how to have righteous indignation. God has it. Vengeance belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. All souls belong to God, the good ones and the bad ones. He said he created the wicked for the day of judgment. So you pray. You pray, you pray for the wicked that they may repent of their sins because you know that judgment day is coming. You know that. So you pray for the wicked. You don't have a right to condemn them to hell and neither do I. Let the word speak for itself. I stayed with the word of God. I didn't give you my opinion. I stayed with the word. I told you what the word says. But don't you worry about the wicked. Look, look at this. Oh, I love this one. It says, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yet a little while, guys. Just pray. You make sure you're living righteous. You make sure you're living holy. You make sure when the bridegroom comes, you have oil in your lap. You make sure you are doing what God said, what Jesus said. It is written. Make sure you like Noah who found grace in the sight of God during a time when there was so much evil and wickedness going on in the world. You better make sure you find grace in the sight of God. How did Noah find grace? He found grace in the sight of God by doing what the word says, by keeping God's righteous commandment. And that's what we have to do. I don't care what's going on. God's still going to hold us accountable to his word. I know what's happening in the world, but did you do what I said? Did you do what I said? He said, it's okay to be angry, but just don't sin. Make sure you're not sinning. Don't let the devil make your heart stony. Don't let the devil make your heart evil with racism. Come on guys, keep a clean heart. Do some checks like we do that car when we're about to put it on the road. Come on, check yourself. Father, search me, search my heart, search my motives, search my intentions, God. Lord, you know what I'm feeling, but don't let me be wicked. Don't let me be evil. Let me do what honors you, even in this situation, because it's okay. He's hurting. God's hurting. We're, a lot of us are looking at a race of people who, who are being oppressed. But God is looking at the world. He is looking at the world. That's one small portion of the evil and the wicked things that are going on in this world. God sees it all. He sees it all. And he is hurt over this. He said he is disgusted with the wickedness that is going on in the world. He said he extremely dislikes the wickedness of man, the evil that man do. And guess what he said? He said, don't worry about it. Don't you worry about it. There's a place for the wicked. In a little while, the wicked won't be anymore. This is not going into his kingdom. It's not going into the new heaven and the new earth. There'll be no black, there'll be no white. There'll be no, no racism. Just people who really love people. 
Huh? There'll be no, no color barriers. There'll be none of that. Just righteousness and holiness. Just, let me tell you something. Just love. Just the love of God. Let me leave you with this. Here's what the scripture says. God is love. God is love. And you know what it says? He that loveth not, knoweth not God. So folks, when people don't know God, they don't know how to treat people. Because the scripture says this, we are to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. How can you love God whom you have not seen, and yet you hate your brother that you have seen? It's all twisted up in this world. But you make sure you love like God loves. You make sure you know how to be angry but do not sin. And you understand that the wicked are just about to be no more. So, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're wicked, you might be a racist person. And you better check yourself because I don't care who you are. Racism is not going into the kingdom of heaven. James, I believe, told us about that, about racism. He said, are you partial? If you let someone come into your your area, your presence, who dressed real nice and expensive clothes, and you say to them, sit here in this nice place. And someone comes in who's not dressed so nice, and you say, you go sit back there, or you sit up under there where the footstool is. Are you not partial? You better check yourself, man and woman, boy and girl. You better check your heart and see if you have an evil heart of racism. Is racism in your heart to any degree? To any degree. You better check it. Because not one speck, not one wrinkle, not one tear, not one blot of racism is going into the kingdom of heaven. It ain't going. I don't care what your title is here in this earth. It's not going into the kingdom of God. Check yourself now. Repent of that thing. Come on, repent of it now. Ask God to take that out your heart. Ask him to take it out and deal with it now. Because I'm going to tell you something. Two things are going to level the playing field for all people. Proverbs said, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, death levels the playing field. A rich man can't buy himself out of death. He dies just like the poor man. And the grave don't discriminate. So repent while you got breath in your body. Return to God with all your heart. Tell him, I got this issue. I got this issue. God, please help me. Help me. Take it from me. Clean me up. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Take this from me. Let me tell you this. Moses, when his wife died, he married an Ethiopian woman. And Miriam, his sister, she was mad because he married an Ethiopian woman. And what did God do? God got mad at Miriam and says, the prophets, I speak to them in dreams and visions. But Moses, my servant, I speak to him face to face. And you hurt his feelings. So now you got leprosy, Miriam. Get outside of the camp. Maybe some of you who are racist, you got diseases and sicknesses, and you don't understand why you have them. God gave Miriam leprosy. Put her outside of the camp because she had a racist heart. You better check your heart, people. Black people, white people, Indian people, and Latino people. If you're racist against anybody, I'm telling you it's not going into the kingdom of God. Don't let this thing make you so angry that you become evil. Repent. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to be the Lord of your life, to save you, to deliver you. What We were all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We all had sin. It's just that some people have some sins over other sins, a more prominent sin in their life. You better get rid of it because things are culminating here. We are as it was in the days of Noah. Repent and ask God to forgive you. Now let's pray. Righteous Father, we thank you. Thank you for visiting us through your word. Your word, Father. I spoke your word like you gave it to me. 
I pray, Lord God, that you would bring sinners to repentance. If there are people who are wicked and who are violent, Father, and they hear this message, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch their hearts, that they may repent, turn to you with all their hearts, that you might create in them a clean heart and renew a right spirit within them. We do pray for the Floyd family that you would comfort their hearts and their minds. Father, we pray for our nation. It is broken. It is broken. And what we're seeing on the outside, Father, is just all of the anger and pain and all of the abuse and the oppression that has been on the inside. The pimple has popped and now it is oozing pain. The infection is coming out. Father, we only you can bring healing to the nation at this point, God. May this nation repent to you. David said this. He said, Father, you, I have sinned against you only. I've done this evil against you. All souls belong to you. May we repent to you how we have treated one another. May we turn to you as a nation with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength that you again, you said if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, I would hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. The land is sick. The land is sick. Father, your word said when the head is sick, the whole body is sick. This nation is sick. And we ask you to bring healing in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to keep all of your children. Help us to keep oil in our lamps, knowing that the bridegroom is soon to come. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks. I just ask you to continue praying for the nation. Make sure whatever position you take, how you're feeling, make sure you do not sin. And just pray and take it all to the Lord. He's got it under control. You have a great week until we meet again. Amen. Now it's the time for that. Mm -mm.